Today we'll be demonstrating a knotless uh, arthroscopic stabilization for AC joint separations using the knotless AC tightrope. We have a right shoulder, our standard posterior viewing portal. We've already established the cannula for the, for the, uh, for the scope, and we've got our anterior lateral portal. We've started cleaning out some of the rotator interval tissue, and this is an important first step when approaching the coracoid. Today we're demonstrating uh, the new Synergy Panoscope, which allows us to scroll through a 30-degree optic, a 45-degree wider optic, and then 70-degree optic, and we'll demonstrate that as we go along here. So we're in 70 degree mode here on the Panoscope and I've cleared out the base of the coracoid and it's really apparent how much our visualization can improve with the 70 degree scope. Here's the coracoid base, coracoid tip here. It's very rare that we can get all of this in one, in one picture, but it really gives you a sense of how far to get medial, how far to get lateral. You want to be close to your base, obviously, not close to the tip. And again, I can do this by just hitting a button and scrolling from my 30 degree to the panoscope to the 70 degree scope and it really gives you tremendous versatility in terms of being able to see this. We've established our subcoracoid vault which is where we want to uh, visualize the, the pin coming through. I've got my guide through the uh, anterolateral portal. I'm in 70 degree scope right now, 70 degree mode. I can follow the superior edge of the subscap, really get a sense of where I am medial to lateral because this is what I want to establish. You want to avoid coming out here where you're too uh, anterior and you risk fracturing the coracoid and make sure that you're at the base of the coracoid. And again, if I want to get comfortable with my position, I can scroll through with the panoscope with a flip of a button, 30 degree panoscope view and 70 degree to really get comfortable and place my, my drill hole exactly where I want it to be anatomically. We're center center on the clavicle. We've got our guide under the coracoid where it needs to exit at close to its base. And we're going to go ahead and drill. In this cannulated drill, you should be able to feel four cortices. The first cortex, obviously the clavicle, and then the base of the clavicle is your second cortex. And then you'll feel the, the uh, drill bit drop to the coracoid. Okay. Now he's through the clavicle, sitting on top of the coracoid through the coracoid, and now we'll see it in our arthroscopic view. We'll see the drill bit come through. And you want to have good control here so you don't dive. And once you get that thing in, you can uncheck it from the handpiece. You can remove the, uh, remove the guide. You take another view and make sure you're happy with where you are. Again, here we're going to scroll through our 70 degree. You can really come underneath it. You can really see that orientation and the location of that. Make sure you're happy that you've got center center position on the base of the coracoid. So we'll take the cannulation out of the drill bit. There's a, sometimes a little bone at the end of the drill bit when this happens so you want to make sure you spin it and clear that so your, your wire can pass without any impedance because sometimes that can get hitched up down below with a little bone fragment. Once we see the wires in the subcoracoid space we'll come through the grasper and bring it out of our cannula. The wire through we can then remove our drill bit you can do this by hand or do it by power. I'm holding the wire so it doesn't go anywhere. And you're just going to back it out. So this is our implant. You can see we've got a clavicular button up top. It's pre-assembled with a number six suture in a tightrope configuration. And it's got a passing loop distally that will pull anagrade through our three millimeter drill hole We'll use our loop suture through the wire, pulling that down and through. And that blue suture is then used to guide and pull through our tightrope. What you want to make sure you're not doing is pulling on these sutures because you don't want to close this button down and, and close your loop prematurely. So I like to keep my fingers on the undersurface of the button just so I can make sure I can maintain my loop length. It makes it much easier to handle that way. And as I pull it through, now I've delivered my tightrope loop here, and this is where I'm going to assemble my dog bone. Once the, once the uh, tightrope is passed, this blue stitch can be cut off. It's no longer necessary. So now we have our dog bone. It's been assembled onto the tightrope loops. Now we're ready to deliver our dog bone through the cannula. You can see George has got his fingers under the clavicular button over the top because you don't want to pull the strands and close our loop prematurely, close our, our tightrope loop. And so he's going to give me a little bit of retrograde tension as I walk the button into the shoulder. Now I want to show you something as we get into the shoulder here. And then as I turn to look under the coracoid, I'm going to scroll again through panoscope at 70 degree and give myself a really good look, not just at the suture going up, but also 
that laser line orientation along the long axis of the coracoid. And I know that my button's in the right position and sitting firmly against the bone. That's exactly where I want to be. Now we have our button ready to tension. And we've marked the limbs of our tightrope so that we can make sure that we reduce this symmetrically between both loops. We're getting a little bit of counter traction with our uh, probe here, just giving us the ability to control the reduction of the button onto the clavicle. And I'm going to pull an equal amount, walking this back and forth. And we get close enough to the clavicle. Now we got the button almost down to the clavicle. If I want to make any fine tune orientation, I can change it. But I want to use the axis on the laser line to line up my button in relation to the long axis of the clavicle. Once I'm happy with where it is, I'll give it the final tension and pull this down. So here we have the disposable tensioner from the fiber tape circlage system. We can use this to help us reduce the AC joint, makes it a little bit easier instead of having to pull on the sutures, and then we can tension that way. If you look at the arthroscopic view as you do this, you can see the tension we're getting sliding through. You have to be a little bit careful not to over-secure this because you've got a lot of control here. Once you've got the tension set, you can back a little of the, of the tension off with the handle makes it easier to remove the sutures, and you're set. Once your construct is set, you want to cut the sutures with a three millimeter tail. No need to tie any half hitches or back it up. This construct is biomechanically sound, and that's our technique.